Science never ends, welcome to the series of videos about Nobel Prize winners, a group of interesting and inspiring scientists. Today, we will talk about a man who is referred to as the founder of medical bacteriology. His techniques of microscopy are used throughout the world. His name has accompanied almost every step in the development of bacteriology, from artificial culture to disinfection and sterilization. He is Robert Koch. Robert Koch was born on December 11, 1843, in Klosthal, a silver mining town in northwest Germany. Similarly to another genius, Einstein, he also showed an aptitude for science and math in his childhood. In addition, he developed an interest in nature. He chose a career in medicine while studying at the University of Göttingen, but natural science turned out to be his main love. After being married, he received a gift from his wife, a microscope, which would accompany him throughout his professional life. He once served as an army doctor in the Franco-Prussian War. After the war, he moved to Wolstein, in modern-day Poland, where his great career began. In Wolstein, Koch set out to study anthrax. Although studies had confirmed that the disease can be transmitted by blood, Koch came up with the profound question of whether anthrax bacilli that had never been in contact with any kind of animal could cause the disease. To find the answer, Koch developed techniques of artificial culture that allowed him to observe changes in bacteria over time. The aqueous humor was, he discerned, an effective medium for culturing bacteria. He developed extraordinarily refined techniques of microscopy. By placing a piece of infected splenic tissue in a drop of aqueous humor and sealing it on a concave slide, he created a living environment that allowed him to observe bacterial growth over days. He discovered that the bacteria would swell, elongate, and form long filaments. The filaments acquired granules, which developed into refractal spheres. The filaments then decomposed, but the spheres remained. Finally, bacteria emerged from the spheres. By observing the entire life cycle of Bacillus anthracis, Koch demonstrated that the bacilli could cause anthrax with or without contact with an animal. This was the first time someone had observed such a life cycle under controlled in vitro conditions. In addition, their formation also explained why contaminated soil could remain toxic for years. Having discovered the importance of spores in the pathogenesis of the disease, Koch suggested burning or burying diseased animals in the soil to preclude spore formation, with far-reaching consequences. This advice subsequently saved thousands of lives. Koch was the first to link a specific bacterium with a specific disease. It was at this time that the golden age of bacteriology began. In 1880, Koch developed the plate technique for generating pure cultures of bacteria, which proved to be one of his greatest contributions. This achievement came from a serendipitous finding. One morning, Koch found the remains of a boiled potato that a laboratory worker or other individual had left. When he went to throw the potato out, some tiny colored specks instantly caught his eye. Why do they have so many different colors? Following microscopic examination, he found that each spot contained a colony of active germs, and every point of infection had its own type of microbe. The discovery revealed, to Koch, a way to grow bacteria in pure form. After acquiring all the tools for his plate technique, he could grow bacterial colonies and subject them to various chemicals, thus advancing the fields of disinfection and sterilization. In 1881, he described his plate technique in a paper that eventually became known as the Bible of Bacteriology. After attending the International Medical Congress of 1881, Koch was determined to discover the cause of tuberculosis. It had been shown that tuberculosis could be inoculated from man or cow to rabbit or guinea pig in 1865. However, no one had yet found a relationship between tuberculosis and microorganism. Using methylene blue staining, he detected a few tiny rods in tuberculous tissue. When he added a brown counterstain for photographic contrast, he uncovered more bacteria. 
He then noticed that old stains were more effectively colored than fresh stains, and he hypothesized that the old stains were aided by a useful chemical they had absorbed from the air. He surmised that the chemical was ammonia, which had alkalinized the methylene blue stain. Thus, he began adding caustic potash to his stains to achieve a similar effect. Now countless bacteria were visible. Koch had discovered the tubercle bacillus. The bacilli were always present in tuberculous disease, but not in normal states. They were numerous when the tuberculous process was incipient or progressive and rare when it was quiescent. He grew colonies on coagulated blood serum and inoculated 217 animals with bacilli from pure cultures. In every case, tuberculosis appeared in numbers proportional to the size of the inoculum. Tubercles did not appear after injection of non-tuberculous tissue. Koch concluded that the tubercle bacillus was the real cause of the disease. Koch detected the bacilli in the sputum and lung cavities of consumptives. He found that he could induce disease in healthy animals by inoculating them with infected sputum. He concluded that sputum was the principal source of transmitted disease and that patients with laryngeal or pulmonary tuberculosis who expectorated large quantities of bacilli were particularly infectious. Although the bacilli could not multiply outside a living host, they retained their pathogenicity for weeks in dried sputum. Proper disposal of infected sputum and decontamination of the environment was, therefore, essential to disease prevention. What is more important about Koch is the standard he set forth for research methodology that is still used today. He had very rigid standards for performing experiments, and his demand for accuracy led to the development of a procedure for researchers to follow in their studies of bacteria. This criterion of contagion is known as Koch's postulates. 1. The organism must always be present in every case of the disease. 2. The organism must be isolated from a host containing the disease and grown in pure culture. 3. Samples of the organism taken from pure culture must cause the same disease when inoculated into a healthy, susceptible animal in the laboratory. 4. The organism must be isolated from the inoculated animal and must be identified as the same original organism first isolated from the originally diseased host. Koch himself followed these postulates, which led to identifying the causes of tuberculosis, cholera, typhoid, pneumonia, meningitis, tetanus, and other diseases. Even though they have some limitations, they were invaluable at the time they were developed. After more than a hundred years, with the outbreak of SARS, scientists still followed Koch's postulates in researching SARS. Koch's paper on the etiology of tuberculosis was published in 1882. Soon, Koch became internationally famous. In 1905, Koch was awarded the Nobel Prize. He was an early 20th century French novelist, dramatist, and essayist. Throughout his life, he was a fervent idealist, deeply involved in pacifism, the fight against fascism, the search for world peace, and the analysis of artistic genius, which was a recurring theme of his works. In 1915, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature as a tribute to the lofty idealism of his literary production and to the sympathy and love of truth with which he has described different types of human beings. Do you know who he is?